So for international students, lots of people consider doing an engineering degree, especially because of the STEM and extra OPT work and the job opportunities around the world. But have you considered structural engineering? Hey friends, welcome to Chai and Coaching. Rob here. And today we're gonna to be talking about a master's degree in structural engineering, the job scope, the coursework, and the opportunities for after graduation here in America. We wanna help you guys, international students and professionals, be more successful in your cross-cultural journeys. Today, Gorov is gonna talk about his master's in structural engineering at Cleveland State University, and now his current job where he works in New York City. Gorov, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hey, hi, Rob. If you saw my previous video with Rob for scholarship, uh, my name is Gorov, and uh, I was at uh, Cleveland State University. I graduated from master's degree in structures and foundations engineering in 2017. And right now, as Rob said, I work in New York City as a structural engineer and a project manager. It has been uh, many, many students who so far comes to United States, 60, 70 percent, they go to IT, computer science. And I'm like, where is civil engineering? I, I don't see many civil engineers out there. So when, when I was trying to apply to universities, I was a bit sketchy that, OK, let me research about job opportunities, this and that for structural engineering for civil engineering but but i was it's it's a lot and i will be explaining you in this video that what are the opportunities how it is done and all the information so yeah awesome and gorob also made an amazing video about scholarships that we did together on how to get scholarships in america be sure to check that out and also gorov has his own youtube channel with great content sharing his stories wisdom advice being an international student now professional in america we'll have the links for those so be sure to check out his youtube channel as well gorov i love your t-shirt it's representing csu cleveland yeah. state university yeah. so let's start at the very beginning why did you decide to do a master's in structural engineering why that Okay, so when I was doing my bachelor's in civil engineering, I was learning the basics and course and I was fascinated by how buildings were made and how this uh, different kinds of bridges were made. So I was always curious to know that how this building stands up like tall skyscrapers and like the connections and everything. So structural engineering is basically the fundamental engineering, which is based on physics and math. And I was not that great at math, but since it was like, it was very interesting topic to go into uh, by applying some laws of physics and mathematics, I chose structural engineering because I always wanted to know how those buildings stand up, how the connections work, how the foundations go up. So it's, uh, so I would tell that structural engineering is just uh, founded on principle of physics and math. And it's, it's just application of physical laws. So, I decided to pursue that just because of my interest towards uh, the uh, problem solving and analytical skills, which is required. So it's like always fascinating to see if an architect, he designs or he layouts a plan. It's always a job of a structural engineer to decide how that building will stand up because architects, you won't believe they come up with crazy ideas of weird shaped buildings. And then they say that, okay, we need this to be stand on the ground. So it's, it's always challenging for a structural <laughs> engineer to to put up with it and there are always things going on with them that this cannot be done that cannot be done because architect thinks from a perspective of aesthetic the beauty of a building and the structural engineer thinks from a point of view of how to make that building strong durable and how it will withstand all the forces vertical loads wind loads and everything so their job is just to just to make sure that the building doesn't fall down and it stays for a long time. So I was fascinated mm -hmm. by all this stuff and I finally decided to pursue a social engineering as my master's. And of course, United States will have great programs and I was excited to come and learn more about this program in US. Awesome. So let's talk now about the coursework at Cleveland State. What was the coursework like for you doing structural engineering? So uh, actually, uh, when, I when I was applying to universities, Cleveland State had uh, structures and foundations engineering so even civil in civil engineering what it is they have many uh, sub branches which is structural transportation water resource uh, then uh, foundations which is geotechnical which is related to soil so uh, this cleveland state was giving me both the programs in one master's degree foundations and structures so i decided to come to cleveland state so gorov is structural engineering a subcategory of civil engineering then? Yes, uh, structural engineering is subcategory of civil engineering and also at, uh, soil engineering or you can say foundations engineering is another sub uh, branch of uh, civil engineering. So civil engineering is a broad engineering scope where you can go to transportation, 
water resources, you can go to structural engineering, you can go to foundations engineering. So they have their own specific uh, details. And you can be a geotechnical engineer after graduation, you can be a structural engineer, you can be a transportation engineer. So I decided to pursue my uh, structural engineering. My coursework, as I was saying, it had soil mechanics, it had uh, finite animal analysis, it has reliability, advanced strength of material. So it was just uh, a sum up of the materials which you use, the designs, how you do your designs in structural engineering, how a building stands up, and also the properties and the behavior of concrete and all different kinds of coursework related to structural engineering. And also, it was uh, quite fascinating as we did some practicals and some projects related to it, like build-ups with some sticks and some vibration force. And there are many more laboratories in the Cleveland State which helped us get to that process. And it was fun having those programs in Cleveland State. Now let's talk about the big question everyone wants to know. What is the job scope and what are the career opportunities for people who study civil or structural engineering here in America? To be honest, I would say that civil engineering scope or a structural engineering uh, scope is never ending. Why? The reason is big cities like Texas, New York, California, they have buildings which are around 100 year old, which need maintenance. So you need to maintain those buildings because some of them are very historical. So in maintaining those buildings, you need a structural engineer to work on it. Like if suppose the building is weak, the foundation is weak, then you need to make it stronger. So you need some designs, you need some plans, layouts. You will need in renovations, even the new construction is not going on, but you still have renovations from your past buildings, which the ancestors made or whatever the engineers from past they made. And in new construction, Come to New York City, just just go down one street and you will see like 10 buildings building up. Every every year there is something new going on. So it's billions of dollars of projects going on and there, construction is kind of a field which will never stop because it's like uh, in demand always because you have many things going on and government funds those government buildings or many of the programs because there are more and more people coming to United States and there are more and more requirements and more and more uh, available resource from which you can uh, go ahead. So in career point of view, there is, it always depends to find a job on you and how you want to find a job. It depends on you, how you network. It depends on you, your skill set. Definitely depends on yourself. But as a career point of view in civil engineering in the United States, I would say that it's, it's booming. It's always booming and it, it will keep on going. It's, it's not that difficult if you know how you want to get a job. So it's definitely, it's it's a reliable field. You should definitely consider United States as one of the options if you want to plan your master's or bachelor's in civil engineering. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And yeah, Gaurav and myself at Shine Coaching, we've got lots of great videos on how to get jobs in America. So if you're studying civil or structural engineering and then follow our tips, you shouldn't have any issues getting a job. Now, Gaurav, share a little bit about your career. You have a really cool job uh, in a really cool place. Just tell a little bit about what it's like, some of the neat things you get to do and the practical day-to-day -day of your career. Oh, wow. Right now, I'm working for United Nations. Uh, it has been going from uh, eight months project. Now, like four months or so is remaining, but they have uh, they had water leakage all over the place in the whole building. So we are fixing those repairs from outside by the suspended scaffold system. So that's a pretty interesting uh, jobs. And since I work for government project, I I have worked for IRS, I have worked for USCIS, I have worked for United Nations. I have worked for many of the government agencies because they have every year projects coming on. My practical day is sometimes I do my office work where I have to make my projects and the schedules or I have to draft some drawings or I have to do some designs. And most of the time I be on site uh, telling contractors how to perform the work or if they have any problems or issues. So the most unique thing about structural engineering or you can say civil engineering is to solve problems as an engineer because architects might come up with few designs which might be very challenging and very requiring many uh, problem solving skills. So if you want to pursue a career which, which gives you a challenging math and physics uh, laws which you have to solve and which you have to figure out like how it will be done you should definitely go for this field and i'm very glad that uh, i'm in new york city i work in manhattan and i i get to know places i get to go to places which is very unique and i can see the whole skyline and 
it's it's pretty amazing to work in the city and i've been working since two to now almost three years and it's it's always fun it's every time you go out and walk there something different is going on it and it's it's pretty amazing yeah some of the pictures that gora post on his instagram are crazy you know these beautiful skylines these crazy views he's getting up in these buildings the construct it's it's really cool i love watching those on your instagram so yeah, new york is such an iconic city yeah, it is it's it's amazing and it, if being in the construction if you go and visit those places it's it's like a paradise for you it's amazing Yes, yes, indeed. So our chai question for this video, friends, is are you considering a master's degree in engineering? Let us know in the comments, maybe which kind of engineering do you want to do engineering study abroad for your master's? Let us know which kind of engineering discipline. Uh, share that in the comments with us. Gorb, as we continue, would love just to hear a couple things just about Cleveland State University. Is there a favorite highlight of studying at that college? You know, what's something unique or special there or just the city of Cleveland, which maybe people don't know as much about? Yeah, Cleveland State was an amazing experience. Like literally, I used to stay in downtown Cleveland and my university was like two minutes walk. My classes were two minutes walk or so. Suppose my master's classes were starting from five o'clock in the evening. So I used to go out of the house at 445 sometimes because it's, it's so close. I can walk down there. It's an amazing experience staying in downtown. Like I was on 19th floor over there and you can get the whole view of the city. So it's, it's a plus sign. And Cleveland State itself has many uh, great professors and many great opportunities on campus. It's a big university, many might not be aware of, but as soon as you go and research about it, you will get many programs, many ways to get involved. They have their own international student community. And of course, they have Indian Association and every other country is representing it. And they have uh, programs every before COVID, of course, when I was studying that they had many events going on, many celebrations of all the festivals throughout the world, because as you know, US University, they are welcoming to international students and they had student campus and many resources which you can go and the most uh, great thing was we had a pass, a student identification card, which you pay $30 for the whole semester and you can roam in any public transportation or you can go anywhere in Cleveland. So that was a plus. You just pay a bunch of amount and you get to explore the whole city of Cleveland. And everything is nearby. If you stay in downtown, you don't need a car to commute. I was not having a car when I was in uh, in my student phase, but still, you don't need it if you prefer to stay in downtown. But if you want to go outskirts, there are still uh, public transportation available or you can get a car. But overall, it's a great city to be in. and. It's it's an amazing experience. You should definitely consider CSU Ohio as your option. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And to wrap up, Gaurav, what are some final tips or suggestions you would give to people who are considering MS in structural engineering or civil engineering? You know, what can people do to prepare in their bachelor's or in their work experience? You know, what, what can they do before they actually start or approaching that master's? The tips I would give, the first tip would be very important is you have to have core knowledge in your key academics means physics and math should be strong if you're planning to go to structural engineering and also as i've been telling you there is no spoon feeding in master's class if you didn't know that physics law or a mathematical uh, problem you they won't be professors will be willing to help you you can go to their office hours ask questions but they won't be telling you at the same spot if you don't know the basics you have to learn it by yourself from your home and come to the next class, be prepared. My professor Duffy, he, he was a great guy. He used to say that uh, in India, we asked that, uh, I have a doubt. So he used to say that, do not doubt yourself. Every time you ask something, just say that you have a question. Do not say that you have a doubt because doubting is like you're doubting on your capabilities or you are doubting on yourself. So it's always important to keep that in mind that ask a question to a professor and not a doubt. Always go to their office hours to solve anything you have any questions the second point i would say is have a strong and supportive network why it is important because uh, you have to join many networking uh, events or a site or i would say that you have to join many of the professional people who work in asc which is known as american society of civil engineer there are structural engineers of specific regions you you should join them they have many events so you go to that event that presentation and it's free for students so if you go you will meet professionals the companies the ceo of those companies come so in that way you build your network you build your connections and they know about you that where you are studying 
and what are your interests so you won't believe but that structural engineering association there will be 100 company just designated for structural engineering jobs so can you imagine you are going to a seminar or conference where there will be 100 companies sponsoring i mean they will be doing structural engineering in their whole career out of which 10 or 15 companies might be hiring international students you never know so always be having a strong supportive network and other things i would just say that you have to have software skills like tech plus tech pro if you are not there then you will be picking up you will go far in your studies then mentorship and internship is very uh, important if you get an internship you will come to know about the codes the building codes building standards and you'll be able to understand the laws and rules and regulation of that state another way another tip is to participate in competitions because competitions will show you how uh, proficient are you in certain task your time management skills your uh, skills and abilities or your problem solving skills and last will i will say that be open be open to your career and the opportunities which is related to your field don't be restricted to that okay i want to do only this and if you're not getting that opportunities be open and try to explore other options as well and uh, critical thinking and problem solving is the main important part of any engineer which you should have in order to achieve great success in your career that's so true Gaurav, I love it. Those are some great tips. This video has been packed with so much information. My friends, if this has been helpful, give a big like and thumbs up to say thanks to Gaurav. Be sure to check out the other video he made with me about how to get scholarships and funding here in America and the best resources for that. And also be sure to check out his own YouTube channel, which is packed full of incredible information. Gaurav, thanks so much, man. This has been really fun. I appreciate you sharing your story and your journey about structural engineering at Cleveland State. Thank you so much, for Rob, for inviting me. And I'm, I'm glad I collaborated with you. And any questions you have, uh, please feel free to reach out to Rob or any specific question for me, reach out to me on my Instagram or my email ID and comment on my YouTube channel anyways. And we'll, we'll be happy to help. As Rob always says, we are here to help you guys and succeed here in America. Indeed, that's so true. That's what Shine Coaching is all about, about helping you guys be successful in your cross-cultural journeys. Don't forget to subscribe so you guys can stay tuned for more helpful content. Connect with us online and social media. And yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time at Shine Coaching. Cheers. <laughs>